Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Pro or Pittsburgh Professional Ratcheting Tap Wrench. This has a, or, or is a T-handle style tap wrench with dual T-handles, which is a unique part in addition to it being ratcheting. Uh, I believe the part number is 97633, and it's only uh, 20 bucks on the shelf. This item, surprisingly enough, was one of the few that doesn't go on sale very often. They've actually been selling it for se several years, and they still do have it. And I finally got one after many years of seeing it. It's actually made in Taiwan, and uh, it's manufactured pretty well. We can take a close look. It has sintered uh, hardened steel jaws. Very, actually, pretty nice jaws. Uh, it's all really pretty heavy, solid. It's all machined, solid steel. So it's really surprising, of course, except for the sintered steel jaws. But the collar is heavy-duty steel, and the receiver is heavy-duty, and it's actually rebuildable. And at the end of this video, I'll take it apart so we can look at the ratchet mechanism. It has these uh, dual T-handles, and they both have ball detents. There isn't, like, detents, but it's, you know, spring-loaded friction balls, so the handles don't slide back and forth. Let me zoom out a little bit here. And so this works with uh, taps as well as, actually, screw extractors. Screw extractors are the same thing as taps. Each size extractor has a square drive, and it's uh, in relation to the size of the extractor itself. There isn't like quarter inch and five sixteenths and three eighths. They don't follow just standard increments. They go up through various sizes. So you actually really want an adjustable wrench like this. This thing will go from what does it say here, uh, quarter inch through half inch, and I think it's just small enough to grab this. And it actually it is. So this is just about at a quarter inch. And so when you do your tapping operation, you could have two, hand, two hands with the handles extended like this. So you could get uh, it started straight. That's very important to start your tap straight. And then you can use the ratcheting mechanism where you can, uh, well, that's backwards here. But you go this way if you're using a spiral extractor and you do this way, which is actually forwards. And once you get the tap started, you can ratchet. One thing to make note of is this does kind of promote bad behavior because when you're using four flute hand taps, you're supposed to go in 360 degrees and then back 180 degrees. And when you're ratcheting, it makes it much more difficult to actually keep track of that. So using it with like spiral extractors, much better because you can get those extractors started straight and then you can just ratchet it out. But when you're actually performing tapping operations, you do want to keep track of that. I would generally recommend it. You, you use the center position, which is nice. It does have a center non-ratcheting position, and they actually put two little divots uh, right there so you know that you're in the locked position. And if anybody wants to know how they got friction balls on two handles, they drilled all the way through, and there's a spring and a ball on the bottom. They put in the, these two handles, and there's another spring and ball just under the set screw. Once they insert the handles, then they uh, permanently set these ball bearings to keep them from sliding out. You're also, the ratcheting action, once you've done tapping, uh, done your tapping operation, then of course you can reverse it and ratchet the tap out nice and quickly. At least until the friction drops off to where you can unscrew it by hand. So it's actually a really nice tap wrench uh, overall, especially because it has a locking center position. And it really just is made pretty nicely. It's disproportionate for many of other... I mean, Harbor Freight's tools have been getting better, but for years, you know, this ratcheting tap wrench was always really nice just because it was all machine steel, actually uh, decent Taiwanese, and uh, good knurling. You know, even the uh, reversing ring is steel on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Really, uh, it's a pretty nice unit. It's one of those tools where if it was marked with a much more expensive brand name i might you know, say you know snap on but uh if it was marked with a much more expensive brand name people would happily accept it because it really is pretty nice and as far as tap wrenches go they're usually much you know thinner and cheaper uh steel wrenches which have like a collar that's kind of hard to tighten down this has a real nice taper and wide jaws and very large threads uh the larger diameter means you can really just get a nice grip and really get the tap or the extractor in this case uh, very tight in the jaws and due to the taper it's always nicely self-centering uh, this is kind of like a two-tooth Jacobs chuck that you hand tight hand tighten anyway that's about the end of this review and I just wanted to show people this uh, ratcheting tap wrench I am going to take it apart for anybody who does want to see that um, and give a quick tip on reassembly because it's a little bit funky but you can just hear 
as I unscrew this, you can hear just how, how much steel it has that kind of uh, uh, deeper tone. You can see this collar is actually really nice and thick. We can see that the chrome plating did work pretty well all the way through the inside and outside. Here's our two jaws. The tricky part is that it has this spring to separate the jaws. That spring goes into these two holes in the back of the jaws. But one of the issues is, is that when you try to get this set back in here, the little dog leg of the spring wants to tilt over and fall down the hole like that, and then it never wants to reassemble. So you have to kind of carefully set everything. You have to get the two little jaw, the spring in the two little holes in the jaws, kind of hold it all together, get it into the little slot that's here, and see it's definitely a fidgety operation. This tool did come pretty dry, so I'll probably add a little bit of lubricant. I haven't opened it up to the ratchet mechanism, but I'll do that. But you'll definitely want to lube this. It's probably easier to insert it upside down like that. And then you know you have it correct because you kind of can get everything to balance just like that. Then you put the collar back on. That will be a frustration because what will happen is that spring will pop out. It will be tilted over and one of these jaws will be up higher. And it just won't close properly. So that's just a trick to reassembling it for anybody who wants to know. As far as inside, it is fully rebuildable. And I don't know if we can really see, but there is a uh, fairly large hex Allen screw. It looks like a 5 millimeter. I mean, definitely large enough to be respectful, for, respectable for this kind of tool, and it is indeed a five millimeter, and it indeed feels like it is locked tighted in there. It is. It wouldn't have this much friction, uh, this much, this far out. Now it's starting to soften up. Definitely a Loctite screw. So I'm going to use my fingers to hold all this together. Whoop. Oh, no. Well, I was correct about the hole and the ball detent for the bottom handle being pointing upwards. What I didn't think is that they actually had drilled a hole all the way through it, and the end of the screw was what was holding it. So here's our spring and ball bearing for the lower ball detent. And I'm not seeing Loctite on there. I'm seeing evidence that something bunged up the threads. And that's why I was having issues. Let's pull this little mechanism. That should just pop right off of there. Whoop. Oh, interesting. I've never really seen a ratcheting mechanism like that. We have two different uh, sets of teeth. And then what you have here is looks like a big spline drive. It's like a ratchet but it's only you know maybe 36 teeth or something in there but they're all at right angles square angles to fit these little paws and then there's we can see it's totally dry inside so I am going to add some lube but this is a delicate ratchet mechanism there's springs that push these paws apart assuming into oh I see so if it the ratchet turning one way and kind of hits the paw since they're offset, there's an angle, so I assume that when the ratchet mechanism moves one way, what this locking ring is doing is indeed retracting some of the paws at different angles. And we can see that here. It's pushing either these two out or these two out for left and right, or when you put it in the center position, they're all held in place. Kind of interesting. I thought that this is a pretty unique ratchet mechanism. Oh, almost lost this little part down here. There we go. Just to show what the ratchet teeth look like. Here, I'll get it back together. And here's a little reversing collar, and there is a detent. Whoop, there goes the ball. There's where the ball came from, and there's a little spring in there. These little ratchet teeth are kind of interesting. They kind of rock back and forth, and the spring sits right inside that uh, little groove. Anyway, just wanted to show what was inside this unit for anybody who might want to take it apart. And we actually got to see that it has a fairly unique ratchet mechanism in it. Uh, this whole front collar piece is one machine piece of steel. It's actually pretty surprising. 
uh, the overall build quality of this whole thing. I mean, there is a lot of machine work in this. Oh, there went my little spring. There's a little spring behind that ball detent. It's super tiny and a tiny little ball. That's the detent that works against the side of this uh, ratchet ring. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.